In Luke 8, 43 to, to 52, we saw the story of the woman with the issue of blood. The, this man. the first thing that man is, is that he's supposed to be the conduit pipe. Jesus, oh, Jesus, oh, Jesus, oh. So why principalities, powers, rulers are working, they are also raising human agents from puppets that do their will. You know, some of you young men here, you, you have long game. I'm not saying everybody. I'm just saying the trend, the one that is a trend. And when you see ladies, you are doing like this. You don't know you are an agent. <laughs> you don't know. See, look good though, I have beers. But I'm saying there's a trend now where people showcase things. You don't know. This intelligence are deep. It's not only naked women. You don't know. You see some men, they, they remove five of their buttons until their chest open to this place. They literally don't wear singlet. Why they were in the gym, you would think, oh, they are exercising. Gym has good head value. They don't care about health. <laughs> Listen, there's nothing wrong in looking good. Don't get me wrong. And there are many benefits. You can toughen your muscles. You can facilitate the, the movement of blood. Your arteries, your veins open. Cholesterol, you know, is burnt out. You know, it, for healthiness, for good look. It's good. Look good. It's good. I'm not looking too bad. <laughs> but, but, but what I'm saying is that if those things you build becomes a channel that demons ride through. Now you went to gym. You have six pack. You have four pack. And seven ladies have lost their virginity. And, and you don't know what is going on. You are an agent. You are a puppet. So when, when they come around, they remove their shirt, put it on their neck, and they are walking around. Because they know that the ladies in the environment are weak when they look at them. And so the reason they sweated hours in the gym is to become a pity so that an agenda can be facilitated. Meanwhile, those ladies that they disflowered will go and, and, and destroy seven families. And so before you know what's happening, a cycle of wickedness has been created. It began from something that looks as if there's no harm. Something that is even good, medically speaking. But there's an intelligence. This is why the wise men must rise to manage the gates so that the sanity of a territory is kept. Some ladies go to gym now. It's not even about health. It's to reshape themselves so that they can dress with tight things to seduce married men or pastors. They are not even, they don't even care about young men because it's not marriage they are looking for. They say married men care for them better. They are more mature. They are more reasonable. And so you see her squatting in the gym. She's trying to build different shapes so that she can dress skimpy. And you don't know that intelligence were weaved into it. And you come into a territory, everywhere is perverted. If we will safeguard our generation and preserve it for the next as a heritage, then those who behold Christ must be born. The first way to behold him is to receive and obey the instructions of the word. Because in the beginning was the word. Jesus is not the picture you see around. If you want to behold him, you must receive, believe, and obey the word. That's where the journey begins from. And at this point, you will need some level of consecration. This is why I told you the Bible said, looking away unto Jesus. That means it's a choice you make. Like Paul, you will not like it at first. But Paul said, I beat my body. 1 Corinthians 9 27. I bring it under subjection. You must see there is a place where you will force yourself before you find the help of God. If you don't know how to force yourself, you will never become. Because the devil doesn't give us breathing space. You are driving, you look left, you see something that throws you off. You enter a place, you want to eat, you see every second is bombarding you because he wants to keep you a slave. You must make up your mind and say, no, I cut off. And you will, it will be painful, but you will cut off. In 1 Corinthians 6, 17, he said, come out from among them. He said, touch not the unclean thing. He said, they that bear the vessels of God, they must be holy. You come out. You come out, then God begins to help you. He said in 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 19, he said, the standard of the Lord standeth sure. He said, therefore, the Lord knoweth them that are his. 1 Timothy 2, 19. 
It said, they that name the name of the Lord, they must, you depart, you depart, you depart from iniquity. If you want to behold Jesus, you will first of all depart. And this departing is difficult. It's like circumcising yourself. This is, the, this is what you will show to God that you are ready to become part of his agenda. See, some of you, all those seductive garments you bought, so that anywhere you come, all the men will be thrown off balance. You will burn them. I'm telling you, it's a consecration requirement that when you sit somewhere, your whole lap is open and everybody is you will burn them because you are an agent of darkness. Men look at you and the next thing they go and start fornicating. You, you, you don't know what's, even you know. I'm not giving you a type of dress to wear, but I'm telling you that the spirit of God will always condemn you that you know what you are doing. You wear a garment, your whole chest is exposed. If, if, if it's Christ you want to walk with, the first consecration is to burn them. And then ask God to begin to help your heart. Because the wickedness in you must have to die. Some of you young men that you kept beers, not because you love beers, but to confuse women. You will have to, you will keep a clean shave for a long time. A long time. It's called come out from among them. I'm telling you, if you like, lie down in church and cry. You will not be part of God's agenda. Because you are still a medium that Satan is using. It's beyond, oh, come to church, leave town, and you are singing and dancing. Listen, kingdom is not about excitement. It's the convergence of sons who are willing to pay the price until the kingdoms of this world becomes the kingdom of our God and of his Christ. You are here, you have three apartments, you kept three different ladies there, wasting their destiny, and you think you have children? And you think you have a daughter that will become anything? You have wasted so many destinies. You will go back, apologize to those women, and burn those bridges. Paul said, present your bodies as a living sacrifice. It's a kind of circumcision that is done without anesthesia. It will hurt you, but you will cry and say, help me. It is those cracks that are formed in your soul that the Holy Ghost enters through. He cannot find access into you until you are cracked in consecration. Until you are cracked. It is the crack that opens up in you that is the allowance that the Holy Ghost enters. This is the first instruction that the word will give to you. He said the scripture, all scriptures, 1 Timothy 3, 16 and 17, are given by the inspiration of God. They are not given primarily to bless you with a car. They are given for instruction, for reproof, for correction, and for doctrine. He said that the man of God might be complete. When I say man of God, I'm not talking about the prophet. A man of God is one sent from God. He said, for as a man sent from God, whose name was John. If you think you were sent to this generation, whether male or female, then you are a man of God. A man of God is one who is born of God. That's the one that overcomes the world. The one sent from God brings a message to a generation. And the one born of God has the power to overcome. That's a man of God. But he said you can't be a man of God except as you receive the breath of the Almighty. And he said when the breath comes in form of scripture, the design is to instruct, is to correct, is to rebuke that the man of God may be complete. Oh, there is a need for completion. There is a wisdom that you must carry. There's an anointing that you must carry. There's an authority that you must carry. There is a grace that you must carry. But you cannot be complete except as you are thoroughly furnished. And the way God does it is that he brings out his blade and he starts shaping you into sight. Listen, we are not blocks, we are stones. Blocks can be formed, but stones are shaped. God will cut you out into size so that you can fit into the house of God so that you can fit into the men that build Zion some of you will approach your boss and tell him I am no longer part of this corrupt system if you don't keep me here working in righteousness I resign I'm telling you you may not have another job in two years brother it's better to die serving God and have a place in Zion than to live a corrupt life. You can't build Zion. 
you know the worst thing that will happen to you is that when you go to heaven and you look at earth and discover you are part of those who built corruption you build the confusion that men walk in today how can you say you are a leader in church but you are a concubine of a married man the money that he cannot train his children with you sit there with a mini skirt with chest exposed and you are taking the money that belongs to a family because you want an iphone and you are wrecking a family and you think you are part of god's army you deluded yourself you think you are part of god's army money that is meant for a whole province you sit there sign add four zeros and loot the money and you think you are part of god's agenda the hottest part of hell has been reserved for you you are just not aware a circumcised generation a circumcised he said who can stand upon the mountains of god he said who shall dwell in his holy city he said they that are of a clean hands they that are of a pure heart who have not opened up their hearts to vanity this is the generation that is looking for not an adulterous generation that have made a pact with the world come out from among them touch not the unclean thing they that bear the vessels of god they must be holy they must be holy they must be holy because the men that stay in the throne room they have one cry holy 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 is the lord he said in the year that king Josiah died i saw the lord and his train filled the temple and when he saw the seraphims they had one voice holy is the lord holy is the lord he has nothing to do with the title you can be a prophet but you're an architect of darkness you can be an apostle but you're an architect of darkness the moment a national prophet entered the throne room he was screamed and he was not worthy to stand there he said one of the seraphims took one of the coals of fire and touched him and said your iniquity has passed holy men of god holy men of god they are the ones who speak for god they are the ones who can build zion they are the ones who can build zion and they say as soon as god builds zion he appears in his glory the things we are looking for won't appear until holy men are born an adulterous generation thinking they can host God a corrupt generation full of compromise you can't entrust us with anything not money not power not the opposite sex how can God give us his kingdom the first way to behold him is by receiving and obeying the instructions of the world it's as you perfect to obedience that success comes out of it kingdom success comes from perfecting obedience he said let this book of the law not depart out of thy mouth he said thou shalt meditate upon it day and night to see that you do that which is written therein joshua 1 verse 8 he said then you shall make your way prosperous and have good success most of the things we parade about is bad success because there's compromise at the foundation. Those are the gifts and the resources of Babylon. Beholding him is not just to look at a platform and cry. It's to search out his ordinances from scripture and sentence yourself to a life of committer to his ordinances. Look good as much as you can, but don't be seductive. Apply principles of growth Grow in power as much as you can, but never compromise. You are there as an ambassador. You represent a kingdom. And if you compromise, Zion will not appear. Do you know what it means to lead the economic revolution? You don't know the princes you meet there. Oh my God, when mammon appears, if you are not dead on the altar of sacrifice, if you are not submitted to Christ, you will hear negotiations that will cause you to shake. And those negotiations, a nation can be wiped out for it. That's the level of wickedness that happens there. There are economic leaders today that can decide to kill one third of the world to create a balance. 
Do you know what it means to be on such table and confront men that have been billionaires for 30 years and confront nations that have led the economic move for 70 years and say human life will not be part of what you want to do? You know what it means? See, if you face the pressure there, even without asking you, you will submit. Only dead men can talk on such platforms. Men that are dead to themselves, but powered by Christ. You think things just happen? Even the entertainment industry, sir. There are documentaries today that shows that they are killing children. They expose them to fear. When adrenaline is secreted, they harvest it. Oh, you don't know the wickedness that is happening in the world. There are tables where seven men will sit and tell you that in Africa, let one third die. That they are a consumer generation. That's the globalist agenda. That they are not supposed to be part of the next world. They should die so that the world can have ventilation. Do you know how many of our leaders have opened our borders because they pay them dollars and they harvest iron? Co from Africa to empower the Western world that we are struggling to go to because we don't have watchers in government, we don't have watchers keeping those gates. Diamond, tin, coal, every resource that we have in Africa exported, and they are building their country. And you think Christianity is just to come to church and shout? The next ecclesia must be born. But how do you think God will test you? You can't keep your body. And your excuse is, I didn't have food to eat. So what are your hands for? Go and walk. Is that the person God can entrust with the faith of a nation? When we talk about these things, it's because there is a larger picture. When God gives us instructions, those little, little instructions is to test obedience so that they can know the things they can entrust. Because it's when your obedience is complete that you avenge all disobedience. God say, pray fast, you cannot. Is it when he tell you, say no to the Western world that you can? And they are looting Africa, rushing into Africa as if we are morons who don't know nothing. Just to have best what is here. Because there are few corrupt leaders who don't know where God is going. The first way to behold him is to turn to him in consecration by responding to his word. Thank you.